Good morning, or almost afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of the Solo One investigative team to present some of the data that we'll be presenting uh, tomorrow in the presidential session from the Solo One trial, which is an international randomized phase three trial evaluating incorporation of a lapper of maintenance following platinum-based chemotherapy for women with advanced ovarian cancer who harbor a BRCA mutation. These are the disclosures for the investigators listed on the manuscript. While, and Dr. Banerjee outlined this, while ovarian cancer is a highly treatable disease, owing in large part to its exquisite chemosensitivity, especially in chemotherapy-naive patients, the percentage of patients who survive disease-free for long periods of time is dismally low and hovers in the 10 to 15% range. If we are going to make meaningful improvements on that rate, it has to be with improvements in frontline uh, chemotherapy uh, or frontline treatment. As it stands now, and as Dr. Banerjee pointed out, the vast majority of patients recur within three years of diagnosis, and even though their cancer may remain highly treatable, they are no longer considered curable. Solo One is the first international phase three trial to evaluate incorporation of, of uh, maintenance olaparib or any maintenance PARP inhibitor in the frontline setting. And the study schema is uh, demonstrated here. Uh, women with advanced high-grade serous or high-grade endometrioid cancer uh, who harbored a BRCA mutation had an excellent performance status and had at least an attempt at a cytoreductive surgery were randomized in a two-to-one fashion to olaparib tablets given twice daily uh, or placebo. A key stratification factor was whether they entered the study with a complete or partial response at the conclusion of their chemotherapy. And that's de defined as a complete response would be a patient whose uh, CT scan or MRI at the end of chemotherapy shows no evidence of disease and their serum blood marker CA125 is within normal limits. A partial response patient would be a patient who, in, who uh, ended chemotherapy with at least a 30% reduction in their measurable disease, or perhaps they still had some evidence of disease on their imaging, or even someone who had normal imaging but still had a slight elevation in their CA125. Those would be classified as a partial response, and those were stratification factors. The... Um, Study treatment, the assigned treatment was continued for uh, until the time of disease progression, or if there was no disease progression, it was stopped at two years. For patients who entered the study with some evidence of disease, as uh, I discussed with partial responses, and that disease was still stable at the two-year mark, there was the opportunity for them to stay on their assigned treatment beyond two years with conversation with the medical team. The primary endpoint <coughs> For Solo One is investigator assessed progression free survival, and that is defined as the time interval from randomization until such time as that patient progresses um, by uh, virtue of measurable disease on their CT scan. Key secondary endpoints are progression free survival as measured by the Blinded Independent Central Radiographic Review, or BICR, progression free survival two. <coughs> which is measured from the time of randomization to SOLO1 until such time as patients who've, of the patients who've recurred and get another therapy, they progress again. That's PFS2, time to first subsequent therapy, time to second subsequent therapy, and then our key quality of life endpoint was uh, health-related quality of life as measured by the TOI. So the results of uh, primary endpoint of SOLO1, uh, and just to comment that uh, between the two randomization groups, baseline characteristics were very well balanced uh, as controlled by randomization, and our median duration of follow-up is 41 months uh, in both groups. Here are the survival curves. For the placebo group, we uh, have a median progression-free survival of 13.6 months, which is actually exactly what we predicted it would be back in 2011 when this was designed. Among the women who were randomized to the olaparib arm, their median progression-free survival has not even been reached yet. But the differences between the curve give us a hazard ratio of 0.3 with a highly statistically significant confidence interval, uh, and which tells us, based on sensitivity uh, analyses, that the improvement in progression-free survival for women who were randomized to olaparib is about three years beyond that uh, of women who were 
randomized to uh, the uh, placebo arm. Key secondary endpoints will be shown in detail tomorrow, but they include progression-free survival two, which remained superior for patients who were randomized to Olaparib with a hazard ratio of 0.5. Both time to first and time to second subsequent therapies remain statistically significantly superior for patients randomized to Olaparib. And our health-related quality of life, as measured by the FACTO TOI, showed no clinically relevant uh, decrease in baseline quality of life among patients who were randomized uh, to Olaparib. Uh, the safety profile for uh, Solo One was very much in line with every other study evaluating Olaparib in every other uh, line of therapy. Uh, we saw very manageable, uh, low-grade adverse events, and as demonstrated by the fact <coughs> that only 11.5% of patients discontinued Olaparib therapy due to adverse events, and over 70% of patients who started Olaparib uh, on Solo One. Uh, maintained at their starting dose throughout their participation in the trial gives us a lot of reassurance that this is a highly tolerable uh, and safe regimen. So in conclusion, uh, we feel that the SOLO1 trial uh, has demonstrated really an unprecedented improvement in the progression-free survival uh, in patients with a BRCA mutation who have advanced ovarian cancer uh, when Olaparib is incorporated following platinum-based chemotherapy. A key point here is that there was no change in the Kaplan-Meier curve at that two-year mark when we stopped the Olaparib or placebo therapy. And so it appears that the benefit of Olaparib maintenance is extended beyond even the two-year time point um, during which patients were receiving treatment. We do find a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival too, which indicates to us that there's no detriment to using Olaparib following frontline chemotherapy for patients who do recur and need a subsequent therapy. And there were no uh, new safety signals raised uh, that, uh, that bring use of frontline Olaparib uh, 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 any level of concern. And so in, in summary statement, we believe that the SOLO1 data uh, really prompts a change in the standard of care for women with advanced ovarian cancer who harbor a BRCA mutation. Um, and we hope that this will be available to patients relatively soon. And that's the data. <laughs>